Good morning. Good morning, Hi. Pastor Carr. Thank you. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost. Good to be here gathered with you, especially in the third and last part of our liturgical worship series where we're learning why we do the things we do in our worship service. We're going to be wrapping that up today with the service of the sacrament, which today is a big thing. It's an important thing. It's a great thing because we... Uh, are going back to having, this will be our first church service where we're uh, having Holy Communion. So you guys are our test subject. No, wait, no, you are, that's not the right. You guys are the first to get to do it in worship. We've been having our uh, communion walkthroughs, of course. Um, so th this is the way that communion will work today. Um, instead of kneeling at the rail, uh, we will have a, and there's different words for it, we call it like a drive through communion. Um, but essentially, the ushers will come down, and we'll start, let's, let's start on this side, because it's my right side, and I will start with the right. And they'll dismiss you by pew to come up. You'll come forward and receive uh, the host from me, and uh, David Tobias, my deacon, will be here, and uh, we'll give you the, the wine. And then we have baskets on each side, uh, one right here, as you peel off and go back to your seat on the outside of the aisles, and then on this side, it'll be right here, you can throw your cup in there. Um, and so we're going to do it safe and carefully, and I'll mask up, and I will go and wash my hands right before that, and I'll try not to breathe or, you know, any of that stuff, but we'll have Holy Communion. I'm excited to continue celebrating this real big gift from God in our worship service. So that's what's going on today, and we get close to that part of the service. Uh, we'll work together to get uh, through that and to receive what God has to give us. Uh, lots of things going on. Um, the Brandon family, our new principal, Mike Brandon, and his family are here. I've already announced that. I want to remind you of that. In fact, they were here um, last night in our Saturday worship. Um, so we had a good opportunity to get to talk to them a little bit more. Um, so they're in town. I'm sure they could use your continued prayers. So a uh, reminder for that. Yeah, she really wants to sit in the front pew. Say, so you're not raising a Lutheran here, you know that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So uh, th that's good. Uh, we are continuing uh, to do our live stream services, uh, both Saturday uh, night, our contemporary worship service, and this service, 1025 on Sunday. Uh, so just a reminder of that. We have words on the screen. We also have our full order of worship printed out for you here. Everything is in there, including hymns and all of that. Um, but for you, it's probably easy and nice to be able to just look at the, to the screen for all of those things. So. Um, between our services over the next couple of months, uh, we have the opportunity to take part in a farmer's market. Barry Hawk was here with some produce this morning, and we're inviting you if you have any extra produce that you'd like to swap, change, sell, whatever. I don't know what all is going on under the canopy between the services. We're inviting you to do so. Um, same rules apply. We'll be careful of social distancing and all that. But uh, there's more information about it in here. You can read about this Wednesday night. Or Wednesday, it's 3 to 5. Wednesday afternoon, 3 to 5. Um, Our Lady's Egg is having a drive through happy hour, which I think sounds... It sounds... It probably sounds better than it is. It's going to be great. You have... Yeah, they're going to serve treats and stuff like that. And there is a free will offering. Um, all the money is collected for that. And that free will offering will go to our Navajo mission. Um, and one of our favorite missionaries, Tim Norton, um, in support of his ministry. So... Come and see us 3 or 5 Wednesday. You can drive through, just as we've done previously. Uh, come in on gold. You can drive out and uh, head out on silver. So uh, come and join us for that. This Friday night uh, coming up is another youth event. Uh, we're having an outside movie. I don't know what we're watching yet. I voted for the Goonies, but I don't know what we're watching yet. Um, and my, I think Back to the Future is maybe just above the Goonies at this point. But um, we're going to be outside. I think in cars, you're going to have to ask Mary Boucher more about that. She's very strict about letting us do things like this. So, um, but we are having youth events, so we want to invite uh, youth and families or other people who would like to be involved in that for an outdoor movie this Friday night. That's at 7 o'clock. Um, a week from today, right after this service, um, is our confirmation service. So that's July 19th. Um, and this is relevant for a lot of you here. I said noon, like I just said something, I just said noon, and I was like, ah, we're not, that's going to be a really tight, so let's say 12.30, 12.30 we will start that service, um, because that's not going to give us a lot of time in between for layover, um, so 12.30 we'll start that confirmation service, seven brothers and sisters are being confirmed, we'll have them set up right over there, 
Um, and I'm excited for them. You'll get to see more about their faith in a video, no matter what service you go to uh, next weekend. So that's something important coming up. If you don't come to that service, please be praying for these uh, boys and girls as they make their vows of, of public commitment and their adult faith, which is what's going on in confirmation. So we're excited for them. That's a week from today, right after this service. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Will that be live streamed? We will live stream it. Yes, good question. Yeah, we will live stream that service. Absolutely. Yeah, because we're only going to have half capacity. We have every confirmation gets a row, and that will actually fill up this side of the church. Um, and we have half capacity for others. So not everyone's going to get to come to it. Um, in fact, I would recommend, if, if you would like to watch, just stay home and watch it. And you'll we'll get to be a part of that and see that. Um, so, yeah, thank you. It will be live stream. Okay, let's see. There's probably a bunch of other stuff I could talk about. I want to. One. No, okay. All right, our divine service setting is two today. Would you please join me in our opening hymn, 570. <laughs> sake that he forgives you all of your sin. 
As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We speak our intro it for today responsibly. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. As for men, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness to children's children. To keep those, to those who keep his covenant. And remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens. And his kingdom rules over all. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
The Old Testament reading for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 55, beginning with the 10th verse. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I send it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for this morning is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and as children then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for the Alleluia and verse and the reading of the gospel.
broken and shed for us on the cross so that we might have a meal of forgiveness right when and where we need it in this divine service. Lord, we thank you for the gifts continually given to us in worship. We ask this morning that our hearts and our minds may be focused solely on you so that we might receive the vast gifts won for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear friends, this has been a great opportunity. I have really enjoyed it to take a close, magnified, intentional look at our liturgy. Why we do the things we do, why we worship the way we do. And in looking at all of those things and what we do in worship, realizing the magnitude, the great gift of God that is for us in this time set apart for you. This is a holy time set apart for you in receiving God's gifts. You see, no matter what goes on in our world, no matter what goes on out there, in here, we hear the truth of God. We hear what God thinks about us. We hear how God views us in the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. We hear in this place the things we need to hear in order to live in the world each and every day. In the first week of this series, we learned some vitally important things in how we should view worship. We learn that the direction of worship over and over and over again, every time, is God coming to us. God feeding us with his good gifts, won for us by Jesus. There is no one right way to worship, but we also learn that worship is for the building up of all, and so it ought to be done decently and in good order. Last week in the service of the word, we learn what is being brought to us in this meat of the service. In the service of the word, we are being fed by God's word for us, yes. We are being admonished and encouraged by the law and continually set free by the gospel. One of the major and important pieces about our liturgical worship is that everything we do, everything we read, everything we say, it all centers around a theme or a set of themes for the day. And these themes, they change and they elaborate and they cycle around our lectionary readings that comes from God's word for us. We come together and we hear blessings from God. We hear those things we want to hear. And because of the lectionary, thanks be to God, we hear those things we need to hear as well throughout the church here. Today we wrap things up with the service of the sacrament, which we get to partake in this morning together. Now, the service of the sacrament brings us, of course, the sacrament of Holy Communion, where we receive Christ's true body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. And you're saying, yeah, I already knew that. Like, no doubt, Pastor, we know that's what we're doing here. But each and every one of those things is vitally important to understanding what is going on in the meal and to celebrate it rightly. We call this time communion because we share in a common union with one another. We are different people from different backgrounds, different likes, different interests, different skills and abilities, and yet we are called together to share in something common to each of us, share in something that brings us together. So no matter who we are and what we do, even even if we might be a Broncos fan, we are invited to the table of our Lord to receive the commonness of this. What is common to us? It is this, the body and blood of Jesus. That is what unites us. The body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ that calls us and frees us by his gospel. The body and blood of our Savior that was broken, that was shed on Christ's cross on that day of our salvation. And so every time we come to Holy Communion and it's being distributed and received in faith, we are taken back to a day, we are taken back to a time, and an event in the history of this world. We are taken back to Christ's love for us on the cross. This meal is a meal of forgiveness. That's what we are doing. That's why we have it. That's why we need it, both of us, all of us. That's why we celebrate it as well. 
So how do we get prepared for it? Well, firstly, we prepare to receive this meal in our liturgy with the preface. It's a preface to the meal. It's an introduction to the meal. The preface prepares us for the gift we are about to receive in the Lord's Supper by proclaiming that God is with us and seeking for us, seeking the things that are above in his kingdom, while in all things giving thanks. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. This is that part of the service. Entering into the service of the sacrament, we stand, literally we stand together. The preface is spoken and sung responsibly. This, my friends, is the oldest part of the liturgy, by the way. This is the part that dates back to the second century. This is how Christians have been worshiping for nearly 2,000 years. These, this preface brings us into the time of Holy Communion, and it is followed shortly after by the proper preface. Proper preface. You'll see it in your hymnal. The proper preface. Remember, the propers are those parts in the service that change each day or change with the seasons. The proper preface is a seasonal or feast day specific prayer themed for the time of the church year and together with Christians on earth and the whole company of heaven, right, and God and magnify your glorious name, it powerfully praises the name of God. The preface and the proper preface therein is an introduction to the service of the sacrament. It's where we recognize, we remember, we see that we are communing with saints from all around the world and even the saints that are in heaven. And then together we sing the Sanctus. Sanctus, we're gonna hear some Latin words say Sanctus, we mean holy, holy. We talked about holy a lot, we've talked about it recently. Holy means set apart for God, set apart for his use. The Sanctus is a song as a praise to God. The Sanctus and the song that we sing comes from Scripture. In fact, to be specific, it comes from my favorite chapter in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, where the seraphim flew around and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. In fact, the whole earth is full of his glory. Our God is set apart. There is no one like him. There is nothing like him, and so we sing, we praise, we acknowledge that he is holy. The Sanctus also includes one of our powerful Palm Sunday readings from Holy Week, from Matthew 21 9. Matthew writes, And the crowds that went before him, that is Jesus, and those that followed him were shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Both of these readings do something important. Both of these readings speak something important, these things that make up our sanctus. Both of these readings are a recognition of just who this God is. In Isaiah, the prophet recognizes that he, indeed, is in the presence of the one true, the one only righteous God. And in Matthew, the people realize, and they reach out to Jesus as the Messiah with shouts of Hosanna, save us. The one true God. There is nothing like him. There is no substitute for him. That is what makes him holy. And we sing, holy is he, as we prepare to come into the presence of of a truly holy God into the bodily presence in communion of the one true holy God. We then sing a prayer of thanksgiving. Well, we're sorry, we say a prayer of thanksgiving. Have you ever heard the Lord's Supper called the Eucharist? Have you ever heard that term? Yeah, the Eucharist. That's, that's where this comes. I almost fell off the thing here. <laughs> that's where this comes from, the Eucharist. This is a Eucharistic prayer. This is where we get the name from, Eucharistia. It's a Greek word meaning thanksgiving. It's two words really put together, E-U, E-U. Anything with an E-U means good. Good, and then charis, grace. Good graces. This is our good graces. This is our thanksgivings to God, and we are thanking specifically here God the Father for his provisions. Remember when Abraham said, the Lord will provide the lamb. This is what we're thinking into that. God has provided the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And we are thanking him for sending his only son, not into a world that would 
love him and cherish him and treat him well, but into a world that killed him as a sacrifice for sin, the sin that was paid for on the cross. He sacrificed his own son, and for this we give God thanks. We are thanking God for what he has done and thanking him for staying true to his word and true to his promises, even when it meant giving up his all. And so we, we pray thanksgiving in this Eucharist feast. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Now, we've already covered the Lord's Prayer, but we're going to cover it again for a specific reason. The prayer Jesus taught us, recorded in two specific places, Matthew 6, 9-13, and Luke 11, 2-4, giving us a model for the entire prayer life. We did cover this in the service of the word last week, and we're going to cover it again specifically for this reason. Whether it is a communion service or a non-communion service, we pray the Lord's Prayer, that one taught to us by Jesus, which gives us a model of our prayer life. But, but, and this is why we're doing it again, but on the communion service, this is considered part of the communion liturgy in the service of the sacrament. Why? Because these words connect us intimately to the Lord's words of institution. Giving Him thanks, we pray in the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done, Lord. Thy kingdom come. And when we pray this way before receiving the sacrament, we do so so that we might hear the Lord's response in the sacrament. And His response to us is this, Take and eat. Take and drink. You are forgiven, and I am with you. I love you. The words of our Lord are spoken then. We also call these the words of institution. The words of our Lord instituting Holy Communion, recorded in three places, or four places rather, Matthew 26, Mark 14, Luke 22, and in 1 Corinthians 11:23. Any confirmation student in here, no, I'm not going to pick on them, but any confirmation student in here can tell you there are three things, three things that make a, Nathan's nodding his head, so I know his own, there are three things that make a sacrament, a sacrament in our church body. Number one, it has a visible, physical element, something you can see, touch, and taste. Number two, it actually gives you something. The something it gives you is God's grace in the forgiveness of sins. And number three, it has to be thought of by Jesus. And it has to be instituted by Christ himself. The words of our Lord, the words of institution, powerfully proclaim these three things. That is why we use them every time we receive the Lord's Supper. The words of our Lord take us to that night that he was betrayed on the cross. We are taken to a place in time we are given an understanding of what the meal is and what the meal constitutes of, and we are given a reason for Christ instituting it. These words have been spoken countless times in churches throughout the world for nearly 2,000 years now. They are words that faithfully make this meal holy, holy communion. That is, it is set apart for God. This is God's meal, his meal of forgiveness. And it is set apart for his use. And he uses it this way, to pour out his forgiveness on you, so that you might see, touch, and taste, and know that the Lord is good, and know that the Lord is for you and with you in his forgiveness. Pax Domini, Pax Domini, peace of the Lord, that's what this means, Latin for peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always, you hear me pray. The pastor prays that God's peace would be among us, God's peace would be in us. And that we would discern and meditate on Christ's true body and blood given for us. We then have the Agnus Dei. Agnus Dei, which means Lamb of God. Latin for Lamb of God. We recognize that it is Jesus who is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. These are the words from John, the Gospel writer John, about John the Baptist. Who said this, the next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And after the consecration of the elements in Holy Supper, we recognize that Christ is truly present with us in his body and blood. 
We are praying that he will faithfully, as he does, give us his mercy and give us his grace. And so there grant us peace. This, my friends, this is the final preparation that we make as we prepare to head to, towards the Lord's table. And then it's the time of distribution, which honestly we don't tend to think about too much, nor, nor really should we. But over the past couple of months, my friends, the deacons of Emmanuel, some deacons of Meritai, musicians, worship leaders, and myself have thought more about the distribution of Holy Communion than probably anybody should. Why? We want to keep you safe. And we don't want to burden your conscience. How should we distribute the elements of Holy Communion? Rightly and safely, we ask. How do we distribute the sacrament in a way which does God, God will do his work in delivering his forgiveness of sins? But we also want to do it in a way that does not make the body sick or burden your consciences, my brothers and sisters. It's been a weird experiment, and it's been unpleasant and an uneasy journey, I assure you. However, what God is doing is great. But the distribution time is, in and of itself, is an opportunity to engage you, to engage the entire congregation with what's going on in God's gift for the church. And so, in the distribution of the sacrament, all, all worshipers are invited before the altar of the Lord to receive either the true body and blood of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, or a blessing which anticipates their further instruction in the faith, and their eventual inclusion in the meal. That's what we're looking forward to until that day. Next weekend, seven more, seven new brothers and sisters in the faith will be invited to join in that meal with the body of Christ here. They will be invited to the Holy Communion, the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on Confirmation Day. And this, my friends, this is a communal event. It brings the whole community together. And in it, we, as God's children, are passive receivers of what Christ has won for us and what he offers us through his perfect life, death, and resurrection. Post-communion canticle. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. That's what we do. Or the new diminis. These are the words of Simeon. Lord, I can rest in peace now. My eyes have seen your salvation. These are the words of Simeon as he meets baby Jesus in the temple. And he knows that this is Israel. And this is the world's salvation. We also pray a post-communion colic. We talked about that colic at the beginning of the service that collects all of the thoughts and the themes and the readings of the day together and prays one themed prayer. And there's also a communion colic that brings all of the themes of communion together. And we pray one of three selected colics, which brings together the themes of Holy Communion and gives thanks to God for what he has done. And then we hear the benediction, those blessed words of God for us. The word benediction means... Good saying, bene deser, good saying. These are good words from Jesus. It's a blessing placed on a person. It's a blessing placed on a group of people. And God commands us to bless each other. God's blessing to his people in which, this is great, this is beautiful, he puts his name on us. Where do we know that? Well, we know that from Numbers 6. Verse 22 through 27, this is an old, old blessing. We call this the Aaronic blessing, not ironic, Aaronic blessing. This is from Aaron and the priests of Israel. This is where God instituted it. Number 6, 22, he says, The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Hey, speak to Aaron, the priest and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Verse 27. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel. And I will bless them. Each time we leave, you are blessed. And the name of God is placed upon you. And this ironic blessing, this old, old blessing... 
that God's people has been used, using for thousands of years is given to you. We sing a closing hymn, a hymn recalling the theme of the day and remembering God's promises as we are sent into the week. What a blessing it is, my friends, to begin and end each service with singing God's praise. We are responding in this closing hymn to all that we have seen, all that we have heard, all that we have experienced and touched and even tasted in this divine service. And in our closing hymn, it connects us not only to what we have just experienced in worship, but our closing hymn connects us with our next week's opening hymn where we are expecting once again to come back into the presence of the Lord in this set-apart time so that our whole lives might be one of worship, might be one of praise. In everything that we do, in all of it, our liturgical worship, from the invocation and the confession and absolution, to the readings and the sermon, to the prayers and the psalms, to the bread and the wine of Holy Communion, it all works to draw us closer to the God who comes to us, to deliver his goods, to deliver his gifts for us. And when we talk about having an intimate union with Jesus, when we talk about coming into his presence, how much more can we talk about it than in the Lord's Supper, where with his very body and blood, he touches our lips like in Isaiah 6, and he says, you're clean, you're mine, I love you. We experience this from our Savior bodily. And he enriches our life because of it. The service of the sacrament, my friends, is the apex of our intimate connection with Jesus Christ in the worship service. I hope, I pray, that over these past three weeks that you have gained something new. A renewed, maybe, appreciation for what we're doing here and the freedom to do it. A renewed appreciation for what God is doing for us each and every time, faithfully, that we come and we worship his name and as he feeds us with his good gifts. I hope you learn at least one new thing that will allow you to experience the gift of God in an even more meaningful way. Every time we gather and worship, friends, God is faithful, faithful to his promises, faithful in remembering his word. He is faithful in coming to us. He is faithful in forgiving our sins. He is faithful in giving us real peace in this world. And he is faithful for doing all of this as we hold on to his promises and the joys of his everlasting kingdom, which he will be faithful to fulfill in his name. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Would you please rise and join me as we confess our Christian faith with one another in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Holy Lord, mighty God, you are the strength of the hills and the hope of the ends of the earth. Give to our hearts your perfect peace that we may not be anxious nor live in fear, but rest all of our hopes, dreams, and desires upon your merciful goodness. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. You send forth water upon the earth, that it may bring forth the abundant fruit that feeds our bodies with all that we need. Help us to be wise and faithful in the use of the rich bounty of this earth, that the poor may be supplied, and that we never fail to give thanks to you for all that you have given us for this body and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. 
Lord, we know that your word will not return to you empty, but will accomplish your purpose in sending it. By your Holy Spirit, make our hearts good soil for your word to be planted, that we may give evidence of a sturdy faith and show forth in our lives the good works that you have called us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. You have given power to the nations, Lord, and to those who govern to act for the good of your people. We ask that you would bless our president, the Congress, our governor, and all those elected and appointed officials who lead us, that justice may, may prevail and your people may be free to live at peace with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you know that we are weak and frail. Give to those afflicted in mind, body, or soul the fullness of your healing and grace, that according to your will they may be restored to health. Hear us for all those who are suffering uh, in this time. Lord, we bring before your throne of grace our sister Dee Davison, who's once again uh, suffering severe back pain. Lord, we ask that you would bless her and provide the relief she needs. Lord, we ask that you would be with Chris Shoppy's brother Stephen um, and his father, who are both at risk um, of COVID-19 in their workplace. We ask also you be specifically with Stephen as he's also been diagnosed with stage two kidney disease. Lord, we ask that you would work uh, in his life for his healing. Lord, we ask that you would be with the family of Deborah Amarez, Lord, um, who is a friend of Mary Alba. Um, Deborah passed away recently. We ask that you would bless her family with um, a peace that passes understanding and a hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ alone. Lord, uh, we give you thanks this day that um, uh, Jill Pilot's sister is doing much better, Lord, and uh, not experiencing some of the unexplained pain in her pregnancy. Lord, we ask for a continued healthy pregnancy. Uh, we look forward to the day of, of that new birth uh, when we give you thanks for that. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Holy God, uh, your word endures forever. Keep us from being tossed about by every wind of change and chance, and help us to endure upon the firm foundation of your word and sacraments. Prepare us that we may worthily receive the Lord's body and blood and be kept by his blessed communion toward the day when we shall be reunited with all who have gone before and dwell in your presence forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In him, with him, and through him, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, both now and forevermore. Amen. We sing our offertory. <laughs> salutary that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. that you go in God's peace, that he bless your week. Thanks be to our God. I'll see you. I'll see you in the back. Mm -hmm.